Welcome, this is NDTV Profit and Earnings Edge, and we are taking stock of the quarter gone by for Asian Pains, which has come out with its numbers yesterday. Uh, well, to take us through the quarter gone by and what we can expect going forward, we are in conversation with the MD and CEO of the company, Amit Singhal. Amit, good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining in. Well, my first question was to do with your volumes growth, which was in double digits, and yet, well, we had a subdued revenue growth number coming in. Can you talk to us about the factors that have actually led to the revenue number for the quarter gone by? So overall, uh, as you rightly said, uh, you know, the volume growth has been pretty good in terms of the double digit in terms of what we've been able to kind of get in. Uh, the value was under pressure because of the price decreases in terms of what we had taken to the tune of almost about 3.7%. And that is why we saw that possibly there was a little bit of a degrowth in terms of value what we saw. We also saw a little bit of a, uh, you know, a mixed difference in terms of our product range, which kind of also depressed the value a little bit more to that extent. But but having said that, what we definitely saw was that uh, overall the urban and the rural demand was at par. Urban was a little bit uh, higher as compared to rural, but the rural is starting to prop up to that extent, which is a positive sign in terms of what we saw in the environment. We also saw the institutional B2B segment kind of doing quite well overall to that extent in terms of both the uh, spends on infrastructure, construction, builders, and so on and so forth to that extent. And the third bright spot was the industrial sales, where we saw uh, the auto uh, finishes sales uh, as well as the productive paint sales kind of uh, surging well for us to that extent to double digit numbers. So, overall, I think uh, that has been the scenario overall a little bit uh, kind of uh, dip in a march in terms of the institutional sales because of the uh, lack of government spendings because of the election court kind of kicking into that extent. But otherwise, I think the demand, demand has been a little bit moderate overall and these have been the bright spots in terms of kicking up the double digit volume growth which you've seen. Right, Amit, so I want to talk about demand and break that up into two, uh, two uh, areas. Of course, the first one is your institutional sales. Uh, you know, the first quarter is also going to see elections naturally because, uh, you know, the, 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 next, the next two phases are still playing out at the moment. And uh, we won't have that much clarity when it comes to government spends. Moreover, when it comes to, uh, you know, the real estate sector in general, residential or commercial for that matter, uh, well, uh, while there was a lot of construction activity which was happening in the past few quarters, uh, the construction activity in the next few quarters is not expected to be as high. Uh, so if you could first tell us just about the institutional sales on your outlook and what your expectation is, of course, uh, notwithstanding uh, the auto sector as well to a certain extent which contributes to your B2B sales. So overall, uh, uh, our expectation is that the you know the B two B segment should kind of uh, grow in terms of uh, double digit value numbers is what we see, and this is double digit value is what I'm saying to that extent because today if you look at the components of the projects business, it kind of comes in uh, a large part comes from factories as well, which is the uh, spends with respect to maintenance and new factories which are kind of coming up to that extent. The second area is the area of government in the infrastructure which kind of comes in which possibly would be a little bit slower uh, given the elections uh, kicking in in this quarter one to that extent. Uh, the third area is the builder construction segment which is uh, again according to us uh, I think the uh, the mid and the top segments are still kind of really doing well overall in terms of what we see around. And the fourth area is the, you know, the uh, cooperative housing societies and so on and so forth in terms of their own maintenance and stuff like that, which is also a fairly big segment to that uh, overall to that extent. And I think uh, given these segments, CHS is also supposed to be great. So overall, I would still be pegging the uh, projects B2B business at a double digit value overall in terms of what we see. We have traditionally had uh, very big growths in terms of even excess of 20% going ahead. A little bit slow down, but I think they still, still should be in the double digit value growth. Right, Amit. I, you know, I understand. I know that Asian Paints is by far the leader in the paint segment, but uh, we have another player who is deploying a lot of funds, and they're coming up with uh, a substantial amount of investments in the area as well. Of course, it should be up and about over the course of the next few months and perhaps the next few quarters. My, uh, I just want your overall take on competitive intensity. What you are anticipating over the course of the next three to six to nine months, and uh, whether or not uh, there are 
are some measures that you guys are taking, or for now, you guys are not very unfazed about competition at the moment? So as we look at it, uh, you know, I have always maintained that uh, we have always had competition in this industry, and given the fast pace of the growth and the kind of profitability we see, I think uh, it's not surprising that we will see more and more competition kind of coming in this industry as we kind of go forward. Uh, currently, as a leader, we have been always working in terms of increasing the per capita consumption of paint uh, in the country since it is much lower as compared to any of the uh, developed economies in terms of what we see outside. And therefore, I think one of the big imperatives of Asian Paints as a leader is that we are expanding the market in a very big way. We've just launched uh, one new product called Neo Bharat, which is based on a new latex technology which we have introduced, which is really going to the bottom of the pyramid looking at the unorganized sector, looking at low-cost paints which are kind of operating there and getting the unorganized customer into the organized market in a big way to that extent and therefore it opens up another 5,000 crore segment for us in a very big way. Similarly, we are looking at some other oceans like the French Polish market which is another big market in terms of uh, looking at where there is uh, unorganized players playing and we are kind of looking at converting that into a branded market to that extent and therefore we feel that uh, today as we kind of see this 80,000 crore market, we want to kind of really build it even more so that there is enough space for uh, each and everyone who kind of comes in. I think uh, today the way this industry has been growing, uh, we are uh, not really worried about uh, new competition coming and what they are doing. What we are very clear is that as a brand, we are putting energies behind uh, increasing the brand equity, increasing our advertising spends, looking at supply chain efficiencies which are far more to that extent, looking at uh, working around in terms of innovation in a very big, big way as we kind of go ahead. So I think currently I would say that uh, we have seen competition earlier and we uh, uh, really welcome the new competition which is coming in to that extent and we are not looking too worried about in terms of what's going to happen as far as competition is concerned. Uh, right, Amit, you know, let's move on and talk about margins then. Of course, your gross margins have seen an expansion. The, curse, the concern to a certain extent was that crude was high in the quarter gone by, and there, on that account, your, your, you know, your crude derivatives would have some sort of impact. Is there a lag impact that we can expect in the upcoming few quarters? And the second question is that while your grass margins did expand, your overall EBITDA margins were slack at the moment. So what was that, uh, that on account of and what can we expect going forward on your overall uh, operating margins front? So two, three areas one we see is that, uh, you know, the crude has been a little bit up and down in a certain band because of all the geopolitical situation which is going on to that extent. Uh, we are watching the situation pretty closely, but as I see it, uh, uh, the material inflation has not been... Uh, uh, very high in terms of what is there. In fact, it has been a little bit more flattish in terms of what we have seen. And therefore, I think in the immediate future of Q1, we don't see any price disruptions which are going to happen in terms of either increases or decreases to that extent in terms of going forward to that extent. Uh, as I see it, overall, the gross margins uh, have definitely gone up. And I think uh, there also we have been maintaining a certain band in terms of the gross margins, which we will kind of operate at. The PVTA margins, if you look at for quarter four, definitely went down because of uh, uh, increases which we took in certain areas. For example, the whole area of advertising and marketing, we've upped our expenses overall in terms of uh, really upping the brand equity, taking new brand ambassadors, putting out a lot of below the line, above the line measures in terms of what we have done to that extent. And that is possibly uh, eaten into some part of the margin. But more, I think, deficit has come in because of the value growth not coming in very, very strongly. As far as the year is concerned, uh, we are still maintaining uh, strongly a margin of uh, uh, 18 to 20% as far as PVT IT is concerned. And we think that uh, FY24, we have delivered almost about a 21.6% uh, kind of a PVT ID margin, which is much higher than the previous year, which is the financial year 22, 23 in terms of what we see. And going forward, I think we are confident that we should be able to maintain the overall margins uh, above the the guidance in terms of what we have been given. And under what circumstances can we expect perhaps uh, some sort of pricing action over the next few quarters? I'm not, uh, I'm assuming that there won't be further cuts in pricing. Could there potentially be, uh, you know, price hikes uh, perhaps over the next few quarters? If that is the case, what are the factors that could lead to that? 
So currently, I think uh, we are all aware of the geopolitical situation which is going on. So if uh, crude, for example, literally kind of uh, upsurges and there is a disruption in the crude price going up, it would kind of really uh, affect all the derivatives which kind of come in along with crude, especially the monomers which are kind of involved and the solvent-based prices to that extent. So I think uh, in that case, if there is a surge which happens, we will try to adjust the pricing that something will have to get passed on to the market if it happens. But as I said, that Q1 is looking secure. We will have to look out for Q2 and Q3 in terms of what really happens if uh, there is a disruption in terms of the crude prices. And that is something which we are watching ahead with fingers crossed. Amit Singer, thank you for joining us and taking us through how the quarter has gone by and what we can in fact expect from the upcoming financial year. You're watching NDTV Profit.